Welcome. Today's post is, 86 PSYOPs, Media Bullet Time. Published on November 3, 2023. News narratives are coordinated by major media pushes. Consequently, some news events can be decoded by juxtaposing popular movies released around them. Here are the topics we'll be decoding today. You can always find this list in the description below. If you enjoy this video, please press the like button, and subscribe for weekly full-length blog posts, and shorter, more shareable videos. Let's begin. News narratives are coordinated by major media pushes. Consequently, some news events can be decoded by digging into the movies released around them. For example, did you ever notice how many innocents are killed in the Matrix? Bullet time. I'm not talking about my subjective view either. The movie itself makes it clear the heroes are forced to kill innocent bystanders. Objectively innocent of any wrongdoing as their only crime is taking a job in security. What news narrative could be tied to trench coat wearing mass murderers of innocents? It's not like that exact thing happened within a month of release of the film, right? March 24, 1999, Matrix first premiere, trench coat mass murderer of innocents. April 20, 1999, Columbine Massacre, Trench Coat Mass Murderer of Innocents. Did you know The Matrix was released within a month of the Columbine Massacre? I had noticed this before, but up until this month I had not found an answer to it. This was the biggest news story and most revolutionary piece of media of its time, and the giveaway for intent is the language used. If you've ever looked up The Matrix, you already know the most famous story about how it was made. The famous, bullet time, effect. They took hundreds of cameras to accentuate a single moment in time. The exact effect is literally taking hundreds of cameras onto one gunfight and taking picture after picture of every microsecond of it. Sound familiar? The barrage of media surrounding the event is a direct parallel to the technique. This is a definition of what Columbine was. Focusing media for years on a single moment in time. Think about that name for a second. Bullet time. Was there anything released around that time focused on bullets? This does not mean the people behind the matrix were responsible, but it does mean there was likely an understanding it would happen. It means the media fiasco was prepared, and the matrix may have been a messenger to explain it. Disinformation agents would have you believe the rich of the world are bathing in children's blood and eating babies for an adrenochrome high. There is no smarter step you can take to get your head screwed on straight than throwing all of that nonsense out the window. There are real answers to these tragedies, but it's not that. The real answer is usually logical. First the obvious, Columbine was MK Ultra. It was MK Ultra and just one of many cells across the country. These cells were networks of abusers that programmed abused victims across the country to become monsters. Consider what happened due to Columbine. The Columbine Effect Bystander teachers long deaf to cries of abused students were forced into action to stop it. Across the country hotbeds of bullying were diffused like a light switch. Children who went around kicking cats, lighting fires, turning in stories about torturing and killing went from ignored to being stopped. The point is this, there are over 130k schools in America. They used one Columbine to fix 100k Columbines. That's the horrible truth of Columbine it seems. Instead of fighting one hidden cell at a time they funded a few they had identified to completion. That's why until that point school tragedies were muted, but then it became a centerpiece of media for years. I'm not endorsing it, just interpreting as best I can these comms I've laid out. I never would have imagined this was the answer. It is nothing more than where my decoding led me. Stopping many bullets. The thought of one tragedy to prevent many more is difficult to accept, but I can think of no other way they could have forced 100k schools to change in an instant. A wake up. Startle. Much like the story of the Matrix itself. That doesn't make it moral, but it may explain a few things. The many oddities surrounding it may tie into the inversion. It even explains why the makers of the Matrix became transgender as it would send a message about taking the violence out of killers. 
In reality the larger transgender push is about making money with countless medications, but this is likely how it's marketed as a moral play to diffuse violence at the source. In practical terms this all means they funded already existing MKUltra cells to do the exact thing they were already geared to do. Only instead of being localized to terrorize and take over another cell it was amplified globally to fix the problem itself. These answers explain this Q post about the Matrix. Deeper we go, the more unrealistic it all becomes. A fitting sentence after decoding how a school shooting was used to stop more of them. It also explains why it's all remained hidden so long as this makes it clear the very target of the crimes engaged in the same thing to counter the ones doing it. This Columbine slash Matrix convergence in time makes it likely other films released the same month also coordinated comms tied to it. Idle Hands, a film I decoded here. A film I decoded as a push to promote porn and marijuana among others as solutions to the MK problem. A way to sedate people in mass and condition them into harmless distractions. Harmless for those in power anyway. In the film the teen's idle hand becomes a conduit for the devil, but the other was immune because he masturbated and used it to watch TV. Effectively giving addictions in place of destructive tendencies. Columbine was a media drum beat that lasted a very long time. Bullet time, a special effect famously overused. There are one hundreds of parodies in major films, shows and games. And each iteration invoking the original. Remember the name in movie for what that backwards movement was all about. Bullet dodging, as in avoiding bullets. It's not the bullets that hit that the comms highlight, but the ones avoided due to it. Dig deeper, and we see the origin of the technique goes to an interesting point. Speed Racer. The very same movie the makers of The Matrix remade after it. They made several films after The Matrix, the only one they acted as director slash writer slash producer on was Speed Racer. This is interesting for a few reasons. Just like in The Matrix, bullet time, the camera pans around the main character in action. It is similar, but we can't say for sure this was what they were invoking yet. Still, it suggests, Speed Racer, is integral to the comms of the Matrix. I've covered Speed Racer before. That it does have a connection to MK Ultra in the sense that it's about, driving. That is the word that was used to define driving MK victims in the original experiments. Driving by Cameron. The use of the monkey in Speed Racer equals symbol is in imitation. Monkey see, monkey do. Looking at the origin of Speed Racer. April 1, 1967. U.S. Department of Transportation, 87 billion budget. April 2, 1967. Speed Racer anime debut, Bullet Time. April 2, 1967. Princess Knight, origin of all magic girl shows. Gender bending story. Interesting to see it coincide with a transgender story given the history of the Matrix. Though from a practical standpoint the fact that a multi-billion dollar government branch about cars is the more obvious thing to connect, though it's possible neither are relevant. Big government projects are often accompanied by ops as I frequently decode. MK comms involve international surveillance, so we must look across the sea in comms. April 2, 1967 Japan, Speed Racer Debut April 1, 1967 USA The Littles and the Terrible Kid, book released about hidden tiny people living inside the walls of human families. That's a, bug, com. The whole symbol of, Cameron, like with the original MK Ultra. Notice the other major movie released alongside The Matrix. May 16, 1999, Star Wars prequel with Nat Portman. March 31, 1999, Matrix with Carrie and Mossad's Cam as Trinity and Bill Pope behind cameras. These are symbols of surveillance. This connects the comms of 1999 back to the 1977 ones with the original Star Wars. Carrie, as in, Carrie, ties into the first Stephen King book with villain Carrie White. 1977 The Top Two Box Office Movies Smokey and the Bandit and Star Wars. Both about carrying the carry in white away from government. 
Kari, as in the Matrix literally also has Kari and Mossad's as the co-star. It was also the debut of the first successful Apple machine and the first computer that could connect the average public to the phone lines for a pre-internet, but I talk about that frequently. The Trinity. Just like Kari and Mossad's in the film. The tech push is equally big in the Matrix and I believe that's another side to it. All of this gets funded, and the product push is built into it to offset the enormous cost of publicity to make it famous. In both years it pushed technology and carry movement. Part of the push with the Matrix was in bringing people online. The focus in film was people traveling over the internet. 56k back then. I'll return to these comms later. There's another avenue to discuss that will loop back around to this. So these psyops using real people. It's not clear to me where the edges are. How much is real versus fake? I am certain Columbine was entirely real in execution partly because my own past is tied to the MK world. I am confident other major tragedy incidents are also real and yet are coordinated by fake things. A great example to that. PSYOP coordination, laughter epidemic. Mainstream media across the board asserts the following was a true story. True story, in 1962 three schoolgirls began laughing at school, and it spread to dozens of others as an epidemic. Fourteen schools were closed. One thousand affected with three additional waves. It's an absurd calm but easy to decode. In fact, I solved this one at a glance and correctly predicted the exact day it would end before seeing the actual date. That's not the first time I've been able to do that, and I doubt it'll be the last. What message could be sent within 1962 using giggling schoolgirls? If you've paid attention to my decodes one may ring a bell. How did they kill JFK? They literally used a giggling girl to psychologically push the killer into action over the course of years. Marina teased her husband about his weak and womanly body. Oswald feared he was less than a man. That's declassified history, and it's how I knew. It's how I knew exactly when the epidemic would end. November 1963, Final Girls Laughter Epidemic. November 1963 assassination of JFK. After all, why would it continue after the goal was met? These news reports are a smoking gun for intent that was supposed to be forever hidden. The methodology of using coded language to obscure intent is at the heart of comms. They needed to communicate a message to coordinate the prep, but they couldn't say they were brainwashing a stooge into murder, so they create a novelty story that communicates intent. The core of the methodology was literally, laughing, plus, girls. Not just the wife but networks of people around the target also pushing him and helping coordinate it. As an MK victim myself I know there are key figures that do pushing, but they also attempt to get nearby bystanders to participate. Eventually the target is left convinced the only solution is to do whatever horrible idea has been planted inside the head. In this case the idea was that he could prove himself as a man. When you understand this truth a girl, laughing epidemic, lasting from 1962 until JFK was killed sounds a lot less absurd and more like fingerprints on a crime scene. Also, as a side note, a reader accidentally solved a major calm tied to this. Why did they choose Tanganyika to send a calm about laughter? Note the flag. Giraffe equals laugh. It is probably the funniest looking animal, so this gives us a clue on what it means to invoke it. Given the clear usage this is a rare case I would put it as instantly high confidence. Laugh was one of a handful of comms I had thought could be the answer, but I lean towards long neck as the likely symbol instead of wordplay. After this decode you may be wondering about second shooters and grassy knolls, and while it's plausible there were other shooters I've seen nothing in comms that confirms it. Conversely the narrative push for a second shooter is so loud for so long and with so much Hollywood support that I don't buy it. The truth is likely the talk of a true shooter is symbolism for someone manipulating him into the act. Additionally, there probably were other shooters, but not that day. There were likely at least a dozen, Lee Harvey Oswalds, they were conditioning at the time to the same end. 
If they hadn't succeeded with Oswald they would have just kept pushing the others until they achieved the perfect set of circumstances. That's how MK works. Law of Averages It's why despite being MK'd myself I never became a killer, and yet others in connected networks to me did. It's why whenever I look into the history of MK killers I can confirm. Yep, they conditioned me to like the same music, they normalized things like animal abuse, bullying, arson and much more. My mind broke a long ago, but not in the way they hoped. That's to be expected given the nature of it. After several failures at conditioning, situations were created to have me disposed of. Those also failed as they relied on the same conditioning techniques. At certain points the abuse paused and restarted and then paused again, but this post isn't about me, so I won't get into that. The point is I know these networks exist to create killers and even though readers here will never know that kind of abuse you can still understand the methodology and end result. It's just conditioning. No different from growing a square watermelon or forcing someone to have misshapen feet. The brain is no different in how it allows you to shape it. If the growth from child to adult is controlled, then they can make the person grow into anything. I like to think the newer ops are more smoke and mirrors, but that could just be me being too optimistic. There is a history to go through with psyops. Major artists are tied to these coordinated pushes. The more popular the more likely it's connected to important ops. In fact, I've recently decoded that for the most popular, there is often a ceremony of sorts to transfer popularity from one vehicle of comms to another. Like for example Dirty Harry to Die Hard. July 12, 1988, Die Hard franchise begins. July 13, 1988, Dirty Harry franchise ends. D slash har D slash har. I'll be getting more into Dirty Harry in a future post, but the quick answer is I believe Dirty Harry was a mass psyop to convince the masses that cops were basically superhuman and crime would be suicide. The film's most famous scene involves him bluffing a criminal with the most powerful gun in the world into not escalating a confrontation. Die Hard is what I believe an evolution to that concept, but that'll be something I cover in a future post. I mention it now because this type of transition is highly relevant to my next PSYOP decode. The transition to the most popular singer and ops tied to the former and new ones. According to Google the most popular singer today might be Taylor Swift. T. McGraw T. Swift. A recent highly coordinated and choreographed narrative. May 24, 2020. Swift 13, Killing Eve, hit song, Look What You Made Me Do, Eve equals tomorrow. May 25, 2020. George Floyd murder leads to rioting. May 29, 2020. Biden congratulates Swift action. May 29, 2020. Swift 13 blasts Trump for Floyd riots. What might it mean for her to be invoked in that context? I'll return to that point later. The newest Taylor Swift news is she may be dating Kansas City Chiefs Travis Kelsey. This caused his number number 87 to top jersey sales. By itself this means little but if we dig more. I had been digging into Taylor Swift Origins and 87 caught my eye during it. There were the two most explosively popular female pop stars in years, and they debut 87 days apart. March 24, 2006, Hannah Montana slash Miley Cyrus debut. Plus 87 days. June 19, 2006, Taylor Swift debut, Tim McGraw. They share another connection. Taylor Swift's debut was Tim McGraw, a famous male singer. Miley Cyrus' debut is focused on being the daughter of Billy Ray Cyrus. When do you think these two famous male singers had their debut? March 29, 1991. Tim McGraw debut, What Room? Plus 360. March 23, 1992. Billy Ray Cyrus' debut, Achy Breaky Heart. May 19, 1992, Billy Ray Cyrus Studio Album Debut. April 20, 1993, Tim McGraw Studio Album Debut. Seems these two were also tied to coordination. Achy Breaky Heart in particular was a pop culture focus. 
to such an extent that Weird Al Yankovic's had an entire song parodying how often it was played on the radio back then. This means it was a prominent calm at the time. We still need to ascertain what was coordinated. So I look at the nearest famous moments to each debut. May 19, 1992. Billy Ray Cyrus album debut, song about fear of woman breaking his heart. May 19, 1992. Long Island Lolita, 17-year shoots wife of her affair Joey Buttafucco and becomes most popular late-night joke of the year. As for the other one. April 19, 1993. Waco Massacre 76 cultists burned to death after FBI siege. April 20, 1993. Tim McGraw Studio Album Debut. April 20, 1993. Joe Montana traded to 49ers. Another moment at the top of the media for months. Moreover, Montana, and Hannah Montana. Timothy McGraw comes tied to Waco. McVeigh time. Waco was said to be the inspiration of Timothy McVeigh's Oklahoma City bombing. Name familiar? June 2, 1997. Timothy McVeigh found guilty in bombing. June 3, 1997. Timothy McGraw second highest selling album 5X Platinum. Timothy slash Timothy. Tim McG slash MCV Tim. The album before that one. September 19, 1995. All I Want, Timothy McGraw Studio Album 3X Platinum. September 19, 1995. The Washington Post and the New York Times publish Unabomber Manifesto. List of what Unabomber wants slash song giving list of wants. Song, All I Want is a Life. The connection between the four singers seems to be generational. Taylor Swift's first song, Tim McGraw, focuses on likening herself to Tim McGraw. Lyrics, when you think Tim McGraw, I hope you think of me. Asserting perhaps that the kinds of comms McGraw sent are now hers. June 19, 2006. Taylor Swift debut, Tim McGraw. August 7, 2006. Tim McGraw, My Little Girl, Final Multi-Platinum Release. A song about how proud he is of his little girl. The last big song of Tim McGraw was the first one he co-wrote instead of taking full credit. It was also the final peak of his career before it fell sharply. He has this 2004, what if, song about if you were to suddenly get a terminal illness, and then this song about transitioning from Tim McGraw into Taylor Swift and then his career dies slash slows. Which likely means the forces pushing him move to Taylor Swift. An elaborate transition for someone that coordinated media with a police and criminal spectacle. Looking at the Hannah Montana co-stars reveals a few potential connections. April 26, 1977. Hannah Montana brother born 30 plus years old playing teenager. April 26, 1977. Studio 54 famous celebrity sex club opens. Those comms were also tied to data moving and computers. I watched the first episode for Clues and the thing that jumped out was they have the father Billy Ray Cyrus paying to trick the Studio 54 son into cross-dressing. Timothy McGraw slash Timothy McVeigh Believe a partial answer is in the MC, which has been a common way to abbreviate the leader of staged events for over a millennia. This fits Miley Cyrus as a com as well as countless other MCS. A way to denote this individual is the one to coordinate for others. About those McVeigh slash McGraw comms. I have not yet decoded fully what was being coordinated originally except that it tied to Waco. Waco as best I could decode was a comm sending a message to what amounted to hostage situations. So it's not accurate to say it was a hoax, and it's too soon to judge the morality of the parts that were acted. It is a false reality and one I work to dispel, but it is also a mechanism and system that serves a purpose. We must view each piece separate from the whole to judge lest we lump heroes with villains and vice versa. I try to look at everything optimistically, when possible, even though I know that means at times I will paint villainy with too soft a brush. I prefer that over accidentally demonizing heroes as collateral damage as we make accusations. We must dig for answers. This McGraw connection brings us back to the Matrix in a curious way.
October 4, 1996. Bound, first Wachowski collab with Bill Pope film about criminals robbing the mafia. October 6, 1996. Tim McGraw and Faith Hill Marriage. Faith plus Pope. Remember, Bill Pope working in The Matrix. He has an interesting resume. August 24, 1990. Sam Raimi, Evil Dead slash Camera slash Spider-Man, Darkman released. August 24, 1990. Ken Griffey traded by Reds to the Mariners. This helps define the origin point of these ops as likely the KGB. Having the Pope comms may imply the church networks getting involved. Sam Raimi hit it big with the Evil Dead with a famously evil camera that chases people to death. Another famous point for Ken Griffey plus Mariners. October 6, 1995. Beginning of Mariners The Greatest Turnaround. October 6, 1995. Wachowski's first major film Assassins, movie about competing assassins. October 8, 1995. Ken Griffey, The Double, the greatest hit in franchise history. Notice the movie is produced by Rich plus Donner, a symbol for cannibalism. Donner Party, given the subject matter of the film this may have been a symbol to take over MK cells. Or just a coincidence. Ken Griffey, KG. 1988 Ken Griffey Sr. moved from Reds to Mariners 1989 Ken Griffey Jr. begins in Mariners Top Star. December 23, 1991 Nintendo agrees to buy Mariners. December 25, 1991 Soviet Collapse, KGB. This strong correlation continued with the next Russia transition. KGB, Ken Griffey, left the Reds when the USSR broke down, KGB out. KGB SR KGB JR comms KGB JR returns to Reds as KGB Putin gets in power restoring Russia. Putin former KGB brings it back. The funding. August 28, 1990. Nintendo reveals the SNES. August 29, 1990. Ken Griffey Sr. joins Mariners. August 31, 1990. Seattle Mariners outfielders Ken Griffey and Ken Griffey Jr. become first father and son to play on same team. NES plus SNES together. The symbol of Nintendo and Russia merges with Tetris. Tied to helping the USSR break up with a narrative shift. April 16, 1955. Russian Commission Moscow announced Space Lab Sputnik Origin. April 16, 1955. Russia. Alexei Pajitnov born Tetris creator. The symbol of breaking bricks for example. With so many rapid connections I've surely connected a few dots wrong, but you can tell high confidence decodes apart from that stuff by applying scrutiny. Those Tetris decodes demonstrated Nintendo played a role in preparing the USSR for breakup. It gave a Russian game massive success and acted as a lure for the people to move away from communism. November 1989. Fall of the Russian built Berlin Wall. November 1989. Tetris released. Comms used with Nintendo representing the transitions of the KGB. Not the only Japan media sending comms about it. January 10, 1996. KGB successor given new missions, protect and serve and surveil overseas. January 10, 1996. Kenshin begins. Former red haired killer turned protector. Red equals Soviet Reds. X equals X. Ponytail equals story retelling, recorded. Nintendo began by selling cards uniquely suitable for the Japanese mafia to gamble with. Later they got into the love hotel business among other curiosities. So Nintendo plus KGB isn't so much strange as it is par for the course in history. That's not a knock against Nintendo. For all I know those early Yakuza ops could have been police efforts to arrest them by the government. There is so much we don't know yet. However this should at least help clarify how companies and spy agencies overlap and tie into media ops. These massive narratives we hear with terrorist Tim McVeigh and music of Tim McGraw. Tim. Let's consider one more Tim that I think will clear up the whole subject. 
Tebow time. Another celebrity that rose in that time frame is another, Tim. Tim Tebow. A man famous for starting a trend that became enormously popular for a few months and then faded away. In other words a fad. His fame in being a popular fad unlocks much of Tim Tebow. December 8, 2007. Tim Tebow wins Heisman Trophy beating McFadden. MC, a symbol I've covered before symbol of staging events. Tim Tebow wins the trophy of future media success, just like O.J. Simpson, in a narrative tied to a fad plus staging com. South Park did an entire episode on these temporary trends calling out Tim Tebowing and relating it to a Taylor Swifting and Faith Hilling. This media coordination seems to stem from the same source as Tim McGraw's end. January 7, 2007. Tim Tebow featured prominently in an ESPN Outside the Lines. January 8, 2007. Tim McGraw, Last Dollar Fly Away. January 8, 2007. M. Night Shyamalan signed for Avatar Airbender Faithful. Those last data points require more context. That was the earliest major media piece I see on Tebow and that was the first, post-death, calm song of Tim McGraw. The song, Last Dollar Fly Away, symbol of diminish like a fad. Like his sales. 2004 4X Platinum. 2007 1X Platinum. 2009 0X Platinum. The peak of his fame came with a six-game winning streak in 2011. Notice the last win. Wins by unlucky 13. And then next game first loss 23. 23 equals quick removal calm. And so the fad ended. It wasn't just a winning streak but famously losing games that he pulls of miracle wins on at the last minute. I was as apathetic to sports as it gets then, and yet I remember very well how prominent it was everywhere. Here's a calms puzzle for you. Why is his number 15? It's so obvious, but I'm sure most would overthink it. 15 minutes of fame. The number most associated with a celebrity with a quick rise and sudden fall into obscurity. It's perfect. His college career he was a novelty quarterback that helped run a 13-1 win streak. Just like Broncos streak meteoric rise and then. Until he was promoted out of novelty into quarterback for the senior bowl and failed with a loss 13-31. A reversal. All this begs the question of, why, and technically as it all makes money one might think there needn't be a greater reason, but there usually is. In this case notice the famous conversation about Tim Tebow. Why does he fail? He cannot pass. Think about that symbolism. Think about it in relation to everything Tim Tebow was. It wasn't Denver Bronco time, it was Tim Tebow time. He can't pass as in it's all about his thing. The media fever all focus on him and his spectacles about faith. Notice another famous thing about him. Using Bible verses on eyes to get media attention. Caused a widespread banning of the practice. Here's one a reader dug up. August 15, 2013. Faith Hill announces end to her opening act singing the Sunday Night Football theme. August 31, 2013. Tim Tebow cut by Patriots. Tim Tebow equals 15 minutes of fame about faith. Faith Hill invokes 15 plus N plus football. End of that narrative. There may or may not be another level to this in rejecting a faith push. I'm speculating heavily here, but the whole argument is about keeping faith out of football and so it's possible it was a response of some kind after being asked to bring good values or something. We can't always know the whole picture. This is a confident decode, but even so, I can't tell you the exact reason they decided to do it. I did show the planning that went into it, how the symbol was invoked time and time again, and other parts. Tim equals time. That isn't just a word associated with him, it's the very center of the meme and moreover it represents media time. That fits the other, Tim's, as it was about a media window. This clarifies the nomenclature for bullet time, as in the media's time to focus on it. There are many pushes that mold the public psyche. 
I decoded CSI as a push to make the public view it as impossible to get away with crimes as investigators are presented as superhumanly catch anything. These networks of bugs go back a long way. Swift 13. They juxtaposed 87 with 17 slash Q. 87 is a shorthand for 187 which is a murder charge. Much like 666 can be reduced to 66 as a calm when dealing with two digits. 86 equals murder 87 murder charge. June 19, 2006. Taylor Swift debut. June 19, 2006. Cullen marriage to 90s pop band Savage Garden frontman for 17 years. August 21, 2006. Cullen Twilight second book release. Twilight is a book about a vampire named Edward Cullen. Famously popular with little girls. Marriage equals two parties coming together. Likely an agreement of multi-parties to support each other. In fact the very first popular YouTube video. October 5, 2005. I.O. Brush most popular YouTube video first holder. October 5, 2005. Twilight first published. When we look at the video, we see imagery of a taking a young girl's eyes, hypnosis plus phallic imagery plus child text. A perfect symbol for Twilight if you've ever heard its reputation for introducing sex to young girls. Hypnosis plus eyes plus child plus well, you see the shape of it. Blunt. This seems to be a female version of the idle hands comms from before in giving young girls distractions. So at least part of what is going on here is coordinating popularity. That is a given just from the fact that these names were the top culture pushes for children, but there is more than just that. Hannah Montana on the surface seems like an innocent calm, but then you look at what happened after. This too was surely a calm coordinated. Why Hannah Montana? January 8, 1982. Breakup of Bell Begins. January 10, 1982. The Catch, Joe Montana's Most Famous Moment. The precursor comms for the internet would be phone lines, i.e. Bell. This could clarify why Montana was used as a comm tied to data surveillance. The comm for catching. I believe that definition gives us the clue needed to unlock part of the name. March 2005. Martha Stewart released from jail. August 2005. Miley Cyrus cast as Miley Stewart in Hannah Montana. Same name, initials, timing in a massive story of the year, unlikely as coincidence. I have no idea what it means to invoke Martha Stewart there, but apparently the original name was to be Chloe Stewart. This simply suggests the Stewart invoking was built into the show from the start. Additionally the alter ego Hannah Montana was originally Alexis Texas until they found it was an adult film star and were worried children would Google pornography accidentally. Shirley comms, and it's also impossible as she started her career months after the show. There's a simpler answer for some of this. Billy Cyrus 1992 first album names daughter, Hope. Bill Clinton 1992 runs for president is from Hope. November 3, 1992. Bill Clinton from Hope elected. November 23, 1992. Miley Destiny Hope Cyrus born. November 23, 1992. Bill Clinton DOE slash Q energy changes. Meaning, Bill C. was a calm coordinating Clinton's rise. I suspect the Texas Montana character name change was a dig at the then President George Bush who was synonymous with Texas meaning the second coming of Bill Clinton was to be Hillary Clinton. Much of what was going on was crafting the political environment to elect Hillary Clinton. Hence switching men out for women. She was the expected candidate for 2008. With that as a guidepost it may help explain the humiliation of the brother. Obama swept it from under her largely through social media pushing this is interesting if we dig a bit deeper. Before Miley Cyrus the role was offered to Joanna, Jojo. December 20, 1990. Jojo born. December 20, 1990. First internet website launched by CERN. Internet comms. So, Jojo, invokes comms of the entire internet?
June 22, 2004, JoJo debut album, and still top. June 22, 2004, Spider-Man 2 debut. June 2004, Facebook moves from Kirkland, late June. I decoded Spider-Man 2 as comms for Facebook origins here. A symbol for the internet tied to the still biggest player in social media. February 24, 2004. Jojo debut single, Leave, Get Out. February 4, 2004. Facebook founded. February 4, 2004. Pentagon kills LifeLog project. Get Out equals Facebook leaving Gov for private. Remember Jojo invoked the internet. February 15, 2005. Jojo third single, Not That Kinda Girl. February 15, 2005. YouTube launch, possibly launched on 15th specifically to invoke 15 minutes of fame. We will see this 15 in another far more clear calm later. Notice lyrics of song. Wanting someone to bring her home to mother. Not being that kind of girl, i.e. launch a video sharing site with no porn. What then is Hannah Montana compared to that? Secret identity comms. Symbolism of agents rising on the new internet channels. This may explain the ties to pornography comms as securing agents culminates in blackmail. A secret identity that in the show was revealed in the final season. Directly after Miley went from family friendly to shocking. A role model for children to emulate suddenly pushing not just sex, but drugs and perversion. Note episodes tied to her secret identity reveal. November 2010, Hannah Montana reveals secret identity. November 2010, Miley Cyrus 1718 years, Q to exposure. December 2010, first major Miley Cyrus scandal 18th birthday celebration with Bong exposed. December 2010, Hannah Montana kiss it all goodbye. Note her hair slash strings being cut in that last. From that point on she looks to have become a symbol of spooks. Her dead pets tour a symbol of agents in hiding due to scandal. I.e. exposing secret identity as she had. A symbol to represent spooks that had to duck. Beginning with her dog, Floyd, that died on April Fool's Day under mysterious circumstances. An Alaskan, ice, dog she adopted in 2011, the same time her scandals were escalating. Floyd. Brings us full circle. Along with Chauvin, a narrative planned out. Another calm marking the soon to fall. November 6, 2010. Girls Gone Wild creator Joe Francis marries CBS reporter in Mexico. November 7, 2010. Hannah Montana reveals secret identity. Girls Gone Wild equals young girls suddenly made scandalous slash exposed nationally. Notice also she is from Hope, Arkansas, and he was born on April Fool's Day. Cons tied to Clinton for her and for Girls Gone Wild guy. April Fool's equals not really exposing. I had assumed the cons went in a new direction, but this suggests it may still be Clinton markers. Clinton was the intended candidate in 2008, when that fell through it was reasonable to assume the trajectory of comms tied to her would be changed. But of course she took on the position of Secretary of State and had big scandals, Blackberry slash Benghazi slash Fast and Furious. That doesn't mean it's connected, just that it might be a good avenue to dig later. When I was digging into that pornography connection to the show I came across another untrue myth about Leave It to Beaver. That after the show a star of Leave It to Beaver became porn star named John Holmes. This is interesting as I've already decoded Leave It to Beaver as it ties to blackmail and scandals. December 12, 1957. Jerry Lee Lewis marries 13-year-old child. October 8, 1957. Great Balls of Fire, Jerry Lee Lewis. October 11, 1957. First nuclear accident, fire. October 11, 1957. Leave It to Beaver, Captain Jack. Most famous episode. Balls of fire equals genitals on fire. As in this is why he married a child at the same time. Sending a message. 
first nuclear fire at the same time and leave it to Beaver began the same week with an episode about a mysterious fire. There's a lot more to this symbol, but check my other posts if you are curious about what Beaver is symbolic for. Listen to the lyrics of the song with that understanding, and it becomes clear it's a song of submission. You broke my will. The ultra-clean and moral reputation of the beaver is intentionally cultivated so as symbolized the necessary public face of black male ops. Anyway, so John, Holmes, invokes Leave It to Beaver comms. Holmes is a symbol tied to Sherlock Holmes which itself is tied to phone surveillance and investigation of Holmes i.e. targeted citizenry. Which when we reconcile his profession as a porn star it suggests he was a comms vehicle for what? John Holmes was tied to the Wonderland murders. Blackmail ops. Arrested several times before mysteriously dying, i.e. ducking. Possibly a comms vehicle for the investigations. They made a big movie about John Holmes. October 10, 1997. Boogie Nights, 1977 John Holmes Big Budget with Burt Reynolds as the porn director. October 10, 1997. Ken Starr slash Brett Kavanaugh report details White House counsel Vincent Foster mysterious suicide. The John Holmes movie suggested to the cast of Boogie Nights was called the Jade Pussycat. July 1, 1977, Jade Pussycat. July 2, 1977, Lolita author Russia dead. 1977 movie about smuggling out a pussycat hidden in Japan while avoiding Mueller. Interesting to note those comms tied to Japan in 1977. August 8, 1944. Busycom founded Japan Origin of Microprocessor. August 8, 1944. John Holmes born. Probably coincidence rather than marker, but it depends on what these early tech companies were actually doing with early tech. His secret agent character became popular in 1971 right as that company kicked off computer boom through Intel partnership. He is from Ohio, which phonetically is the common Japanese greeting. Maybe nothing to that, but it's one of those things that could be an important calm if I track a few patterns. Regardless, Holmes was highly active in 1977 and that's a year I've decoded more than most. Most 1977 comms are tied to the MK hearing and changes in DOE nuclear data handling the first week of August. August 5, 1977. John Holmes, The New Erotic Adventures of Casanova. A movie about Holmes moving to a new place. Just like the Carrie White moving comms in 1977. Not just MK but data slash coordination tied to blackmail. Moved overseas to keep it away from the U.S. courts. Bugs. There are many comms tied to bugging. Several actual celebrities used as a face for them. January 17, 1949. V.W. Beetle first arrives in America. January 17, 1949. Andy Kaufman born famous foreigner act Man on the Moon. The Beetle is the type 1. But what precisely is being tracked with a bug? That was the VW1 bug. Tiny car, two people. Far lesser known but still very famous is the VW2. VW2 was a van for many people. Expansion of foreign surveillance. There's a famous story about the VW2 for a massive clue on that. Steve Jobs gained capital to start Apple computers by selling his VW2 van. I had long decoded him as tied to those networks. The origin of bugging networks transitioned into computers. VW owners can go where they want, when the want and with whom the way. The VW owners have personal control of their car. Just replace VW with the more common name of bug and it tells the story of moving away from US government oversight. Speaking of which. Kaufman was the face for the foreign bug and Stanley Kaufman is also the name for the owner of Troma. A film production studio focused on independent gore. Troma a play on trauma. Their most famous film and identity is The Toxic Avenger. May 1984. Kaufman Troma, Toxic Avenger. May 1984. Kaufman Andy Death. 
This gives us the transition of bug, comms and much more, because notice that's just the New York screening. The actual release is far later. When do most of these comms converge? April 11, 1986, Toxic Avenger Nuclear Cleanup. April 11, 1986, famous FBI Miami shootout Russell Maddox, leads to big changes for all law enforcement. April 26, 1986, Chernobyl disaster USSR. Russ equals Russia. Maddox. Matrix. Khan's names do typically have an origin. Here we have a massacre that instigated countrywide change with the perpetrator being a Matrix. It could be coincidence, or it could be what was invoked to explain the intent. Needed widespread change again. FBI team led by McNeil, which reminds me of this a tragedy tied to a McVeigh and taking a knee. November 18, 1978, Jonestown Massacre, Mass Suicide Murder of 900. November 19, 1978, Famous NFL Choke, The Fumble. I decoded this in that linked post as a symbol of being too hasty and causing murder and mass suicide. The sports game the next day mirrored this tragedy. The game acted as a message about what went wrong with the cult that resulted in hundreds of dead, including members of Congress. Instead of rushing to take unstable targets, which leads to mass suicide, the solution was decided as long-term surveillance. It all seems to be tied to those USSR KGB cells, not just MK Ultra, but blackmail. Before the Berlin Wall fell KGB ops surely took place behind the wall. With that in mind, April 23, 1947, German VW-2 first plan slash sketched out. April 23, 1947, Roman Polanski's favorite film, Odd Man Out. Film about a criminal fundraising robbery that goes horribly wrong. Raising money using what? Roman Polanski was famous for what? June 12, 1968, Rosemary's Baby, Roman Polanski film. August 9, 1969, Sharon Tate Polanski Manson murder. August 10, 1969, Rosemary Manson family murder. Here we have yet another mass murder and media frenzy. Famously high ratings for years. And a long pop culture print. All of it coordinated in the media push ahead of time. At a glance it looks like the murder of celebrities may have been a way to scare celebrities into cooperation. But that's a guess on my part, I've not decoded the intent with any confidence. The modern invoking of the symbol tends to be with Marilyn Manson, as in Marilyn Monroe plus Manson equals seduction of Manson. Which is probably why after Columbine everyone was talking about Marilyn Manson as the inspiration for it, even though the killers were obsessed with KMFDM which by the way released an album the same day of the murders. Note that driving death, symbolism as well as it being intended as the final album. Important to notice as this reinforces my finding that this whole thing was intended to be a final brainwash. Even though they released more years afterwards they promoted this at the time as the end. Returning to Roman Polanski in the Tate murder, it's worth noting he was also arrested for rape. March 10, 1977 Roman Polanski 13-year-old child sodomy abuse surrounded by five accomplices. March 10, 1977, Uranus discovered to be encircled by five rings. December 12, 1957, Jerry Lee Lewis marries 13-year-old child. Sodomy. Uranus, comms. These telescope updates were likely comms to announce the goings-on in court at the time. Note the unlucky 13 was used for each as these are coordinated comms. That was official court testimony not released until last year. Her identifying five people in relation to five rings being identified. All of it giving updates to the comms community involved about relevant court updates. Roman Polanski appears to have been made an example of. January 24, 1961 Roman Polanski underage girlfriend born. January 24, 1961, Jackie Kennedy introduces Tom Kitten to media. JFK highly allergic. Define Tomcat. 
the point being blackmail ops controlling media. August 4, 1962, Marilyn Monroe death. Plus 17 slash Q. August 21, 1962, JFK's cat Tom Kitten death. Define Monroe Doctrine in relation to Playboy blackmail ops. All of it a struggle between chess players with many figures on the board across the world. Powerful banks, clergy, businesses, and military trying to create coalitions to move the world in a direction. The well-established method is in ensuring loyalty by blackmail. The CIA and JFK went at each other covertly and major figures were brought down in the crossfire. Note the last thing before the death of the most famous sex symbol in America was a conflict on whether to create a national scandal by accusing JFK. Fast forward to 1977. I suspect it was part of a message about why changes need to be made to nuclear material. March 10, 1977. Roman Polanski 13-year-old child sodomy abuse surrounded by five accomplices. March 10, 1977. Uranus discovered to be encircled by five rings. Plus three months. June 10, 1977, Apple II released brings computers to the masses part of the Trinity. August 1, 1977, U-2 Gary Powers spy death crash. August 3, 1977, MK Ultra Senate hearing Cameron documents. August 3, 1977, TRS-80. Bill Gates' proto-internet computer released. August 3, 1977, Star Wars' unprecedented second opening at Man's Chinese Theater. August 3, 1977, Tom Brady born. August 4, 1977, Q Clearance DOE Start, Nuclear Disposal Control. August 5, 1977, John Holmes, The New Erotic Adventures of Casanova. August 1977, Fukushima No. 5 Nuclear Plant Criticality, 1986 Nuclear Disaster. And we get the big changes of the government tied to handling explosive material. All of it seems to coordinate a transition in handling secrets like MK slash blackmail. That's why the plots of the major films that year were all focused on transporting i.e. carrying. What? 1977 was the year of Burt Reynolds with Carrie in white. And Star Wars begins with Carrie Fisher in white. Literal moving the hologram data of Carrie in white begins the Star Wars plot. The fight over control over it. Both are comms I talk about frequently as they involve moving MK data Carrie away from government hands. The creation of several media empires hitting all at once. A symbol of Stephen King's original abused since childhood horror villain named literally Carrie White. Those comms are interwoven with blackmail as broadly speaking the surveillance of those two activities amount to the highest level, Q, of secrecy that exists. 1974 Stephen King, Carrie published Breakout Star, most famous slash successful horror writer. 1974 Steven Spielberg, first feature film Breakout Star, most famous slash successful director. 1974 Steve Jobs, begins work at Atari, creates top computer company by sales. 1974 Steve Wozniak, begins work at Atari and founds Apple. Creates, breakout, with Steve Jobs. Why so many famous starts in 1974 of, Steve's? I have a lot more already written about this, but it's better to cover this in another post. I've been forcing myself to see old movies that are connected to all of this, look forward to that future decode. Much like the four, Steve's, there are other overlaps. April 2, 1968, Apple Core created by Beatles Fab Four. April 4, 1975, Microsoft logo for colors. April 1, 1976, Apple Steve Jobs slash Steve Wozniak. Beatles would create the Apple Core to release media. Given my decodes of each tied to spying this may give us the origin of why Apple. It brings us back to bugging as a com. And the networks that dominated the pre-internet landscape. I'm not always confident who is hero and villain, and whether or not I'm qualified to judge, 
but that is one of many reasons I dig. I'm not doing what I do to push my perspective on anyone or anything, this is all about finding an objective truth. I acknowledge there may be a difficulty in bringing it all to the public. It may be logical to present the truth in a specific and biased order to get optimal results. Not that it matters much with how little traffic I get now, but as I build better bridges for new people, I'm sure that'll change. I think the process should maximize long-term results while ensuring safety. I don't feel there is much point in focusing on that now while my audience is microscopic, but as I continue to improve my decoding presentations traffic could increase. Also, this post is meant to be the counterpart of my last post which was released a few days ago. Both go over mass psyops, but with a critical difference in that one focuses on major ops that have what I believe to include fake deaths at the center. Though keep in mind I'm not always right. Some of the ones in this page may be faked and some on that page may be real. At the very least I decoded them all as coordinated and planned long ahead of time. Next post will have a lot of updates. Telegram chat. Join the decoding blog telegram group. Begin decoding. Send leads. This has been 86 PsyOps, Media Bullet Time.